There are a lot of people out there. Hello. Welcome to the Earth Youth Podcast, brought to you by RTX. Woo. I'm Gus. It? No other sponsors this week? That's it? No, no, that's it. Okay. Hey, have you seen the Rooster Teeth store? It's awesome. There you go. I'm Gus. I'm Blaine. I'm Gavin. I'm Barbara. I am Bernie. And I'm Gus. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but this is probably one of the most panelish podcasts that we've had. We're hey, very I'm a far apart. I'm a little worried. Why? Because you're here. so far away. Oh, is that what it is? You want yeah. to be closer to me? Do you guys want to squish in a let's little bit? Smush, let's smush. Let's smush, smush. Right. I'm not going to move. The audio guys are going to be furious when we're on each we'll other's mics. Welcome to mics. you, Gavin. Got it. <laughs> guys, I, I met Scrappy the dog. <gasps> me too. He's adorable. I've been wanting to meet this dog for like two years. Uh, whose dog? It's Darshell's dog? What's that? Who's Scrappy's owner? Is it Darshell? Dar- Darshell and Mike. Darshell, yeah. yeah. They... He- have Scrappy the dog at the Filthy Casual booth. And I think for two years I've been stalking this dog online, wanting to meet it. And I finally got to meet him in person, and it was everything I could possibly hope for. <laughs> it, he looks like an old man that was cursed by a witch to a <laughs> lifehood as a dog, and he's just like all the time like this. But Gus has a picture that he took with him. I don't think I've ever seen Gus that genuinely happy. <laughs> I was so happy to finally meet him. He's awesome. Did you give it to them to show on the screen, or do we not get that? No, part? no, no. Oh. That, that's private. Okay. That's, that's for the Gus collection. <laughs> <laughs> so I am actually super happy about this podcast, because this podcast is going to settle one of the longest bets, I think, in the history of the company. Uh-oh. You all, I don't know if some of you might remember, he's been in videos before, my son JD. There was a long-standing bet whether or not my son, who, when we started Rashid, was one, was going to get a driver's license before Gavin Free. Did he do it? JD, JD, can you come out? There he is. How's it going? (laughs) There you go. That's amazing. Thanks, dude. (laughs) Perfect. Thanks, dude. Uh, What was the bet? What does he have to do now? I'm pretty sure Gavin knows JD like a million dollars, I think, or something. I, I saw, when I was leaving the office the other day, I was driving next to you, it was a two-lane road there, and I looked over into your car, and I saw you in the passenger seat and JD driving, and I thought, oh shit, it happened. Yeah. Like, it was like, oh my, oh my god, it's really happening. It really happened. Was I riding in the passenger seat like this? <laughs> <laughs> it is really, it's intense teaching someone how to drive, and it makes me a way more patient driver now because I realize when people are honking it, you hear the whistle? You whistled so I can't loud. ever do it on purpose and it always does it on accident. What, what word did you say to create that Patient. Whistle? Patient. It makes me a way more patient driver. Can't do it. God damn it. <laughs> One day I'll discover how to get that whistle to happen on my Thank own. Thank you. But uh, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, as a new driver, he, you know, when, especially when he first started, he tended to drive a little bit slower, you know, and take things a little more carefully, maybe sometimes below the speed limit. And I'm always just waiting for someone to honk. No one really ever has, and you know, they usually can go around or something like that. It also helps that I live in a neighborhood where people, for some reason, drive 10 miles an hour, and I don't know why that is. Do you live in a neighborhood with a lot of old people? I do. Is, uh, there's a lot of old people. Well, look who car- you're talking to, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, FYI, I'm an old person, so. <laughs> is the I'm car you're teaching him in your Tesla? Because isn't that like using cheat codes for your driving learning I, no, experience? I feel, like, I feel like that would be like starting on the boss fight. A Tesla? Yeah. Yo, y- y- Gavin's right, because there's so much acceleration uh, with an electric car in general. Do you find that with, you have an electric car now, Gus? Yes, Are you it still, still ad- catches me by surprise every now and then. You're adjusting to it, because it's yeah. just the way an electric motor works. It just has a ton it of acceleration. It goes. Mm. Yeah, and when you are How does it work? Are, it's all electrons, <laughs> and... Oh. Does it shut off? They feed the hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but one of the mistakes you make when you're a new driver is you can panic, and you, you press the accelerator when you're meaning to press the brake. Like, out of panic, you press it. So there was one time when I thought we were going to go through the front of a bank. We were in a parking lot <laughs> practicing, but other than that, we were okay. It's been, it's been really uh, surprisingly seamless. So you want to teach me next? No. <laughs> Do you want to learn to drive? Well, I did. 
but I've never driven here. If you could have one person from Rooster Teeth teach you how to drive, who would you choose? All right, who, who should shit their pants? Michael! <laughs> Michael just no, no, learned no. how to drive. S- screaming. I, I heard someone say JD. I like that <laughs> idea. Ah, that'd be great. Get JD to do it. How would Michael teach you to drive? Would he just run you over enough times so <laughs> you figure out how a car operates? I think I, you drove my old car in the parking lot once, and I was like, okay, now you're going to switch it into drive, and you're like, <coughs> and, and I forgot, you have to put your foot on the brake, and you didn't even know that I've level. never driven an automatic. It wasn't even an automatic, Gavin. It was a, or, wait, was it? It was. You know, yeah, 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 drive. yeah. <laughs> you don't know your own car? If it's an automatic? You or love it? your car. Do you know how to drive a stick plane? Yeah, my Jeep is a stick, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, because I put out like twice the amount of pollution that you guys' cars like <laughs> eliminate. So I'm basically canceling you guys out. I, that being having driving a stick doesn't mean you put out more pollution. Well, I mean compared to an electric car. Though. But my Jeep is like a. But uh, he's saying twice as much as a normal car. But it's because my Jeep's old and like there, just smokes RPG. up the road. Yeah. There you go. I just I just burn barrels of gasoline just to make up for everyone else as well. Yeah. I don't even have a car. What is this? Yeah, why do you have Gorilla hands? Glue like super oh, glue my, here? Oh my my uh, PA snuck me this Gorilla Glue for. For what? Why? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Jesus. I just had to take it out because I almost sat on it and ruptured it in my pocket. I'm just worried about you taking super glue on a panel. Oh, I don't man. think you can huff this kind of glue. I'm not worried about you huffing it. Oh. I'm worried about not being able to let this cup go at some point <laughs> during the evening. I'm the only one that can leave at the end. Yeah. I really want you to accidentally glue your dick to your leg. Glue my dick to my leg? Yeah. Like, so I really want you to Where do Where do you that. think my dick is? <laughs> on my back pocket? <laughs> Wait, oh, I guess you wouldn't put it in your front pocket. Why? Yeah, no. <laughs> I think your, your genitals have been through worse than that, though, so. Then glue? Yeah. Didn't you have, like, a testy fun time? Yeah. Exploded nut. Ah. Good times. <laughs> it didn't about, really about explode. Half, about half the crowd groaned. Yeah. When you guys, aside, of course, from Gavin, when you guys got your license for the first time, did you get it? day one of when you were able to get it for me it was 16 I don't know what it is in Canada like, like the physical license or yeah, what do you I mean? went and got my driver's license the day I turned 16 Gus I'm assuming you did the same thing the day I I don't remember um I got I don't remember at all really when did you take your driver's ed I took driver's ed but I don't remember the process of getting the first license I the, took driver's ed and I don't remember if I got it immediately or if I had to wait Really? See, I'm amazed because like a lot of the younger generation, like Michael, Gavin, they just like wait till they're like 30 to do it. So I was kind of curious. Show of hands, we were just talking about automatic or manual transmission for driving. Who? Show of hands, who in here can drive a stick? That's actually pretty impressive. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's I not bad. Good half. See, the other half of you would be fucked in the zombie apocalypse when you jump in and you're like, oh Christ. I don't know if I got my I- license right away. My, I learned. I'm to figure out Dude, my... I couldn't get away from my parents fast enough. I, I was like in a I, car and gone. Yeah, I learned how to drive on a manual transmission. And the first vehicle my parents got for me was this little manual transmission truck. And uh, I told them, like, I don't know how to drive a manual. Like, how can I drive this thing? And they told me, you'll learn. Really? And I had to practice driving around the block I lived in repeatedly over and over before I finally got the hang of it. And uh, I took, when I finally felt confident enough, I offered to take two of my friends to the local, we had one Burger King in town. I was like, I'll take you guys to Burger King. One of those guys was Frank. Uh, and they, uh, Frank, who's the DM for Heroes and Halfwits. And they got in the truck and I drove down the road. It was Burger King that was only like maybe two miles away from my house. It was such a bad drive that when we got out of the car, Frank started kissing the parking lot. Because <laughs> he said he, was, he thought he was going to die in that truck. <laughs> what did you do? I ju- it was just very jerky. Uh, yeah, back and forth. And letting the, go of the clutch too fast? Right, kept, yeah. kept dying. and just, I, I, I did not have the mastery of the vehicle. I failed my, my first driver's test, the, the on-road one. Really? Because I was an idiot, and... When you come up to a red light, you're supposed to treat it as a stop sign, come to a full stop, look, and then go if you're turning right. Right. Uh, didn't know that. Yeah. And so I kind of just did like a rolling stop and continue when I saw there was no cars. Automatic fail. Yeah. If you basically break a law, yeah, automatic fail. So uh, I cried a lot. And then uh, my brother made fun of me. Drive ever? 
for the rest of your life? No. Okay. Um, I'm not Gavin. So <laughs> I wasn't too worried about it. Are there any go signs? What? I think, yeah. the, I think the default is the road is the go sign. Right? Like your default state is go until you're told otherwise. Well, I think a speed limit sign is a how much go. Like it's a measure. <laughs> go this amount. Don't go any more than that. I bet somewhere on some road is just a sign that says go. Somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. Probably like the city of go. Yeah. Mm. Uh, that, that what would it be? Would it be like a green circle? Right. That's got to be go, right? Now I'm imagining like a green yeah. circle with white text that says go. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. I'm imagining going up to like an intersection where there usually be stop sign and instead it's a green go sign and people just floor it. But it's, no, that's a go fast sign. <laughs> There's got to be a piece of road where people stop, but, the, but you don't need to. So they had to put a go sign. I think that would be a situation for it. Where's well, the place they, where they, they, need a, they need a million go signs in Austin then. Yeah. Yeah. People stop all the time for no reason. <laughs> so how many of you, I promise this won't be a night of polls, but how many of you show of hands are from out of town? Okay. No, no, a better this is question. the number of people that sent me photos on Twitter of airport construction. I'm done with it. <laughs> I've seen it. I see it all the time. Did you see airport construction? Yeah. And did you start in another airport, magically? This they all started in another airport. <laughs> exactly. They were in another... Okay, I'm done. All right, that's it. <laughs> did, did you just argue against your point? He did. He did. totally did. No, no, no. I just didn't want to go down the rabbit hole. I was saying they started another airport. Now they're here. They didn't see construction at the other airport because they live in another airport. You put words in their mouth. They didn't answer that how, question. How many of you saw construction at the other airport? Your town sucks. <laughs> you're, first of all, you're lying. You don't have to lie for Gus. You have to lie for me and make me right. Well, while we're taking polls. The problem is now, oh, okay. there's parts of the airport I don't go to. They were sending me pictures, Barbara, of other parts of the airport with construction. Now I'm mad about parts of the airport I never even go into. But why, why would you be, would you be more mad if the airport didn't work? What's that? The airport still works. You no, can but still if, get in there. If they don't have construction, then the airport stops working. Yeah, is it over capacity or like the, the doors falling yeah. off? They just build it right the first time. That makes sense. You, Barbara, you had a poll. Get us nah, out of this. it's okay. <laughs> I was just going to ask, who here pees in the shower? Wait, you already said you were right about that in Podcast 500. I know. I just wanted to double down. Who here specifically pees in Barbara's shower? Who does that? <laughs> I, it's fun. Dude. It's a go sign. Go go it looks like so, from someone Japan. tweeted me this. Who is this? Underscore Eleanor Wright. Are you out there? No? Are you watching on the live stream? She tweeted me a go sign. You people in the front row can see it. You other people just have to take our word for it. The, what is that I weird it. symbol at the bottom? It looks like one of the religions in Civ 6 is what that symbol looks like. I believe that's Chinese. Oh, is it China? Okay. Yeah. They are a civilization, it checks out. So. <laughs> That's that weird symbol. I believe it's a word. It probably means go, if I had to assume. Mm. Yeah, a good guess. Can I say something without jinxing anything? I'd say it's all right. Yes. I feel like, I feel like this RTX is going really well. Like. <laughs> I forgot we were live streaming this panel. We're about to get swatted, I bet, here. But, uh. It does why seem would like you say that? The <laughs> why, why would you even? <laughs> that we, we've informed the SWAT team that there is an event here. Uh, so hopefully we're in the clear. So God damn it. <laughs> I gotta go backstage now. Start making phone calls. Uh, but it does feel like there's, at RTX, we talked about this last week, I think, is that there's always something that happens that we kind of have to figure out how to adjust to or roll with the punches. It's kind of part of the course with any event you plan. Yeah, but this year seems like it's okay. Like, it's just, yeah. <laughs> Knock, knock, knock. Yeah. How are the metal detectors this year? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Y'all are cheering for metal detectors. <laughs> <laughs> well, how far, far we've lowered how, your expectations. How far we've come <laughs> <laughs> only one like year ago. Tiki glasses, something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Are the tiki glasses not for sale? No, I don't, I don't think they're in stock yet. Somebody's getting fired. Did a... Uh, uh, Eric can probably vouch for this, but Michael told me a story. It hasn't come out yet. They pre-recorded Off Topic and the post show, and I brought them the tiki glasses 
uh, to the post show for Off Topic, uh, which will air on Sunday. And <laughs> they did the same thing I did, where they kept saying for the rest of the post show, I'm taking this one. And Trevor's like, I'm taking this one. And Eric kept shouting, don't take them, they're prototypes. And afterwards, Michael had two of them, and he's walking away. And uh, Eric goes, where are you going? He goes, I told you, I'm going to take these. And uh, Eric says, no, they're prototypes. And the way Michael describes it, he goes, all right, well, if I can't have them. And, and Eric, when he goes like this, Eric goes, yes! <laughs> and Michael's description fell to his knees on the ground <laughs> screaming. So, but didn't smash them. It's probably like the only order that Eric was given. Like, make sure when we give you these glasses, no one takes them, no one damages them. Yeah. If anything happens, you're out of a job. I want to say to you that that uh, that don't drink at work mug. After we went through the whole hubbub. Do we have them here? I don't know. Do we have them here? Do we sell any of the stuff that we have? I saw guys? a couple. Yeah. But uh, I saw one of them like right after we had the discussion about me stealing the prototype. I literally just saw one sitting on a table in the break room. So. I feel I like I didn't sabotage the company. We actually stole that from Hannah. We took it back. <laughs> you went. How long ago did you send it to Hannah? Like a week ago. Oh, okay. It wasn't yeah. that long ago at all. I thought, yeah. it was, I thought it was a lot longer. I think ago. they I did steal a prototype. That did actually happen. I think they think that's the one I sent to Hannah, but I got Ali gave me a different one and I sent that to Hannah. So I think I'm in the clear. I think okay. I'm I'm free of blame. You're in the clear at the company you started? You're not yeah. gonna get <laughs> you're not gonna get in any trouble. Dude, I don't wanna mess around. They could find me. What could they do? Could they fire me? I could be fired, right? Could I be fired? I mean, we, you could try. Could, yeah. I got really. I was walking around with. Uh, I think I was talking with you. We were walking around with our PAs yesterday, and you asked me a question about getting something done. I said, "Yeah, just tell your PA to do it." And uh, your, I think it was your PA replied to us, "Yeah, Bethany said the rules don't apply to you." It's true. <laughs> Put words in her mouth. Who Nobody can did. fire you, Matt? And Ezra? Probably. I think so. Joel? I mean, I'm pretty objective. <laughs> I could fire myself. I'd be like, yeah, I really fucked that up. <laughs> would you give yourself a meeting? I, I do feel like... Would you if, give yourself a good reference? I feel like at this point in life, if uh, we're all on Twitter long enough, we're all going to get fired. Because it <laughs> seems like just wait eventually and you'll get fired for being on Twitter. Yeah. So that's how it'll go down. What's the best strategy for that? Should we just like post stuff to social media and then a month later delete it? <laughs> You want like to try get, no I, I can just post something on Twitter, see if I get fired during the podcast. Let's like see. Like, only ever oh have 100 God. tweets What would get me fired for tweeting? Like, five minutes ago, uh, the RTX is going really well. <laughs> Pink slip in <laughs> the backstage. This tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to try to swat this panel. I'll be right back. <laughs> no, stop. Jesus, you're just doubling down, just leaning into it. <laughs> no, it's fine for the moment. We'll see. I feel like we've... Stuck my foot in my mouth about that on the panel before, too. Or on the uh, podcast Yeah, before. I mean, keep doing it. Yeah, just keep doubling and tripling <laughs> down. Yeah. Um, so, how, how about I talk about something good instead? You got an ad? No, Jack wanted me to mention something. It's not an ad. Wow. Jack, okay. Jack just asked me to mention something. I just want to say, it's nice to know you have really shitty segues for normal conversations, too. That's great. <laughs> I just, I'm trying to get you to stop talking about that. Is that a shitty segue to get you to I'm shut so the fuck rolling. up about things <laughs> so you keep rolling. saying over and over? Nope. Uh, any segue is good to get you to stop talking about Dude, that. Dude, I've had to put up with a two-gust joke for like 12 years. You can put up with Thank you. Yakin. That portion of the audience is my favorite right over there. <laughs> <laughs> that gets you nothing at all. So right now, there's a, a charity drive going on. Uh, if you go to omaze.com slash roosterteeth, uh, apparently Jack is working with Omaze, and the prize is you can get drawn into Camp Camp and, uh, and get a visit to the Rooster Teeth office uh, and uh, meet some of the animators. And if you enter before August 27th, you get a chance to go to RTX London with a friend as well. Jesus. Wow. Oh, damn. Uh, so the campaign itself goes to September 27th, but the RTX London portion goes to August 27th. So if you visit omaze.com slash Rooster Teeth, uh, it's going to go towards Extra Life. It's all for charity. Uh, you know, that's like kind of the thing that Jack owns at Rooster Teeth, and he really wanted me to mention it since we have such a big audience. Uh, so make sure you check it out after we're done with the podcast. I like the idea of you trying to win that contest just to get in Camp Camp. Just to get a cast in Camp Camp? Yeah. <laughs> I actually applied for a job at Rooster Teeth once while I worked here, and I didn't get it. They posted like a role in marketing, and I was like, I've never applied for a job here. Yeah. And I got a real serious response, like, thanks for your application, blah, blah, blah. 
You know, right? I think those it. are automatic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you use your actual name, like Gavin Free? I use my I use my Rooster Teeth email to send the application. <laughs> But don't you like that, Gavin? I mean, don't you like working at a company that's too smart to hire you? That seems like a good thing. I think that's the best, yeah, that's the best place I could possibly be. <laughs> so there was a, uh, Barbara, you were on the uh, mega panel for animation. Were you on that one? No, I was at the Bloodfest screening, watching Bloodfest. Yeah, you guys were there? That was like, side note, probably one of the best fan reactions to anything we've ever premiered ever anywhere. Uh, so everyone who came out, thank you so much. It was incredible. Yeah, Matt just said the same thing. You said the audience reaction was just absolutely incredible to it. Yeah. So that's awesome. Can we say anything about like when people can see it or anything? Like yeah, that? Um, there's Fathom events. So it's like a one night screening. Mm -hmm. We're doing, I think, 600 theaters around the US and Canada. Uh, August 14th, tickets are available. I'm sure we've tweeted the link a thousand times. Uh, and then in the UK on August 17th, and then it's going to be available in select theaters and digitally at the end of August. And then I think we also just announced that it's going to be available on DVD and Blu-ray at the beginning of October. Nice. Yeah. Are we going to get the Gus deleted scenes on the DVD and Blu-ray? Sorry, bud. Uh, I think you are, actually. Good. Yeah. I, I want an option on the Blu-ray to play the Gus version of the film. <laughs> it's like, it says Gus or Gusless. When it's right. Like, <laughs> it's like, and you get the film as it was intended to be viewed yeah. with all of the Gus scenes cut yeah. into the film. Well, I don't want to spoil anything, but they cut together a short film with only your scenes. <laughs> when, when it, it's funny you say that, because when they cut me from the movie on my birthday... Uh, <laughs> They, uh, they, 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 they tried to console me by saying, oh, you know, maybe we can, we can cut together a special thing on the DVD and uh, we can have you go back out and film some more stuff for this, oh, ex joy. this extra. I was like, no. no. What the fuck are you talking about? So you wanted to make you do more work? Right. Oh, uh, you should do an audio commentary for your short film, though. <laughs> I should do an audio commentary for the film and be like, yeah, this scene would have been a lot better if, uh, <laughs> if I was right there. Did you survive at all? Like... At all? Is there anything where you're in any frame whatsoever? No. Wow. Are you, Are you in, in the, the credits? It, it, it's funny because I was excited about it because almost all of my scenes are by myself. Right. And I thought, that's like your dream. It's like to be in a movie and it's just you. And it's like, <laughs> that's awesome. Like the camera is literally just on my face. It's like, it's awesome. But that's why it was so easy to cut me. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was just me and there was nobody else. No continuity issues cutting you out. So, so did you just, just not affect the plot in any way? I did, but they cut around that. <laughs> the, a little bit. The movie, it sounds like they worked really hard to get you to get out of the out. movie. The movie ended slightly differently. Yeah, it did. With me, but then like the ending changed a little bit since I wasn't in any of the other film. Hmm. There's a lot of really great cameos though in the movie, uh, which the audience last night absolutely loved. I don't want to spoil anything, but there might be some people up here that you'll see, and maybe one that you won't. <laughs> <laughs> up here? Yeah. Yeah. We don't call them Gus's deleted scenes now. We just call them Gus's scenes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just understood. There, you know, there was another cool thing. It's a, there's, I read, not really, I wouldn't say spoilers, but definitely some of the names that you're talking about. I read the people were talking about those on Twitter. The one thing that I was really amazed by was uh, we had at the, did anyone go to the animation mega panel? You did. <laughs> So there was a video that was given to us that was recorded by a very handsome gentleman who's going to be the lead in Genlock, Mr. Michael B. Jordan, recorded the video as an intro to some stuff. And he said in the video, but this is a secret, so keep it a secret. Literally everyone in an audience of 5,000 people somehow kept that a secret. Like, no one has talked about that at all. So you guys are an amazing audience, but... <laughs> Uh, I get to break it on the podcast and say, yeah, Michael B. Jordan recorded this really awesome video. And hopefully, if you go to a different animation panel, maybe you'll be able to see it at that. And I would definitely do that. It was amazing. It was so surreal hearing him talk about RTX mm -hmm. and talk about like doing voiceover with Gray and like name all these people that he's worked with. It's like, those are my friends. <laughs> I know those people. <laughs> yeah. And then they showed a, a clip from it as well, which I think is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the first clips that has David Tennant as a voice yes. in Genlock. Nice. Yeah. And Monica Rial. Dude, so some of these things, they take a long time to kind of work out before you announce them, and we knew about some of these things as much as like four or five months in advance when we were trying to keep it as quiet as possible. But 
I knew about the David Tennant one pretty early, and Ashley is a huge Doctor Who fan. He was the best Doctor. I agree. I don't give a shit what anyone says. I agree. But it was like when, when Ashley, when I just told her at home one night, I go, oh, yeah, we're, we haven't announced it yet, but David Tennant looks like he's going to be able to do a voice. And she was like, David Tennant? I said, yeah. I thought I had to, was going to have to hit her with like a bucket of ice water. You know what <laughs> I mean? It's like she got really excited by it. We also made some other announcements yesterday for the cast of Genlock, and we have one of the voice actors, oh, sorry, on oh. screen or on stage with us today, Mr. Blaine It's Lipson. me. Yeah. Oh. No pressure, look- dude. Chad, Chad and I are freaking out because like we've been like slacking each other and texting each other back and forth about like how nerve-wracking it is to go into a recording booth and then they're like, all right, we're gonna play some of the other voice actors and you can like bounce off of them for performance and then you hear like Doctor Who, Killmonger, Dakota Fanning, whatever character she plays, uh, and, <laughs> and you're just like, ah, you, like you, yeah. It's I hope we live up to the expectation because that's awesome. It's a phenomenal cast. You'll be great, Blaine. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, but I Gray and his team, they've been killing it. Your character, that you posted a picture of him, he kind of looks like you. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, was that uh, intentional? I don't know, but I want to cosplay as him because he's a handsome looking dude. Oh, hell yeah. He's got cool coin, he flips, and he's like, I can, I'm down with that. Can you flip a coin? Hell yeah. Oh, I can flip a shit out of a coin. <laughs> <laughs> Whip one out. <laughs> can you call it? Like, you know, like, can you flip a heads every time? Yeah, totally. Give me a coin. I'll do it right now. Okay. You don't have to give me a coin, it's fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's like, super exciting though. I'm trying to think, what else did they do with the animation panel? I, was, I unfortunately had to hop out for werewolves and get drunk <laughs> on that, so. Yeah. How'd that go? Uh, great, we kept the stupid racial slurs down to a minimum. Good so. for you, yeah. good for everybody. RTX is going really good, really good, <laughs> yeah. So this, uh, I, I think I said this last year when we had the podcast panel in here, but you know, every year I think about the growth of RTX and I think about everything that we've done over the past seven years now. And you know, for those of you sitting in this room right now, the first RTX was in, or the second RTX, the first one in the convention center was in this hall. Like, it filled this hall. We, in fact, it didn't even fill this hall. Mm-hmm. We had to kind of put pipe and drape over here to kind of cut it off and make it seem a little bit smaller. Oh, and the wow. number of people that are sitting out here right now, like, you are more than the number of attendees that were at the first RTX in Jeez. the convention center. Uh, yeah. And uh, that bathroom right there is where the guy asked me for an autograph when I was peeing at the <laughs> urinal. It was right in there. Gus will be doing autograph signings after the podcast. Yeah, so uh, afterwards, if you want to meet me, I'll be uh, right over there. <laughs> I wonder what that guy's doing. Do you think he ever hears the podcast and realizes you're talking about Oh, him? I never thought about that until like, right what now. If he's here? Is, what, is he here? Are, you, no. He says like a roll of toilet paper and a sharpie. He's like, uh uh-huh. <laughs> Who We're at the urinal. Previously... Do you use toilet paper at the urinal? Oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> do you dab? <laughs> I actually do dab, yeah. Don't you, like, get the rest of the, you know, you dab. I, I give it a No, sh- no, wait, wait, let him explain. Go ahead. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, you get the pee-pee out. Otherwise, you, like, you clean off the, because there's sometimes some... So you, like, wind it into, like, a spike and jam it in? Or oh, what do you do? God, no. no. I Please. even cringed at that. How do you get the rest of it out? No, like, typically what I'll do is, like, if someone's in the bathroom with me, I'll pull out a roll of toilet paper, and it's like, they know that I'm pulling out toilet paper, but they can see that I'm not shitting, so I'm going to blow my nose and act like that's what the toilet paper is for, but really, I'm dabbing my so penis. So you acknowledge that it's weird, and you're trying to hide it by pretending to blow your nose? Yes. So wait, wait, you but now get... everybody knows, so what's the fucking point? When, so when do you get the toilet paper, before or after? Well, I've actually gotten it to where I can balance on one foot while still taking a pee and lean down to grab the toilet paper while I'm peeing. Why not there's just... no toilet paper in reach of a... Urinal. That's why I don't go to urinals. I oh. go to the, the stall. Why are you doing it at the same time? Why don't you just get it first? Uh, because that's just not... That's You of all people should know that's not efficient. You gotta, like, maximize your time. Minimize the amount of time that you're in the bathroom stall. You're, like, we're talking about, like, two seconds here, dude. <laughs> hey, man, two seconds. I mean, he's got a point. You don't wipe as the shit's coming out. You don't? Man, I got... So I feel... <laughs> Gus I, is like, I've been doing it wrong all along. No, there's a story I want to tell, but I don't know how to tell it. Um, Just give you your best bet right now. I had a problem in the bathroom this morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I went to the bathroom to uh, do my business, and I couldn't get the toilet paper to unfurl. It was, an, it was, it was like one of those industrial public bathroom sure. uh, toilet roll dispensers where there's two of them, and it was in an awkward position and the one that was available was a new roll, and I couldn't get the toilet paper cleanly off of it. 
As like, in like it was stuck? It like was it was like circle? part of it was stuck and it was trailing in. So as I pulled it, like the ro the, the amount of toilet paper I pulled out got smaller and smaller. Like it would taper off. Gotcha. And I couldn't reach down there and get it. Why don't so, you just use it as floss? I could have done that. So I was in there for an inordinate, like a really long amount of time fighting with this toilet paper roll trying to finish my business. And when I finally came out, there was someone waiting like to get into the bathroom. Oh I was like, God. the toilet roll dispenser was broken? Like I was like, I was trying to justify why I was in there for so long. Just hands are covered in brown. I don't know what like, happened. But I've never encountered that before where it's like, there's a problem just trying to get the toilet paper. Yeah. Do you water, do you dab? Or sorry, do you water, do you fold? Fold. Yeah, okay. I'm not an animal. I'm I have a, I have probably the most disgusting story that's ever happened to me in a hotel room. Gavin, you might want to earmuff yourself. So, you like shit out a piece of no, wet bread just, or something? <laughs> this isn't. <laughs> this isn't something that I thought I wanted to ever tell on a podcast because I felt everyone would just be instantly. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Right. Dunkelman. How are you guys no, doing? How's you guys' RTX going? <laughs> Good to see it's you not me personally. Okay, so I stayed in a hotel room. Uh, a couple weeks ago for a convention and whenever I go into a hotel room I put the floor mat down in the bathroom because the floor is cold and my footsies are sensitive um, so Makes I put sense. it down and then uh, I went to the convention during the day and I came back and uh, I went into the bathroom I showered and then I wanted to put the towel up to dry it and when I did the underside of the towel was brown uh. and I noticed that I guess the person in the room before me um, somehow had shit on the floor and there was little bits of poo. What? Still. <laughs> still Where were you staying? Still on the floor. And. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> and I guess the towel had picked them up. Um, so I had, I had to be switched to a different room. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they just walked through a really muddy field that had, happened to have cornflakes and other things. Uh. You never know. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't know what to say to that. How do you follow that well, up? Uh, so the, the, I don't know how it happened or what, how the cleaning what, crew... When you called the front desk, how did you approach this? What did you say? Yeah. We have an emergency. Role play. You, you play the front desk yeah. guy, I guess. Right. Uh, thank you for staying at Shitty Hotel. This is Gus. How can I help you? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, um, I was wondering if you guys had any other rooms available. Uh, yeah, uh, we have uh, plenty of availability tonight. What, how can I help you? Yeah, I'm going to need to be switched immediately. There seems to be mm, bits of shit on my floor. <laughs> <laughs> mm, how do you say bits of shit? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Um... Are you positive <laughs> that's what's on the floor? No, they just have instantly you, switched me. <laughs> you, I think they take her to a word on yeah. that one. Yeah. Have you smelled it? Did you, uh. you didn't even clarify that it wasn't yours. It wasn't mine. <laughs> no, I, I think mean, that's implied. implied. Oh, oh, oh. But they don't know. Wouldn't that be implied? Yeah, it was like the same day that I checked in. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And I, like, I, I don't justify them for missing it, but the, the color of the floor was the exact same color as the shit. <laughs> That's a design flaw right there. <laughs> I mean, I think the so, real, the maybe real, the floor was all shit. Every maybe hotel I check into from now on, I always look at the color of the bathroom floor to make sure that I'm okay. Really? <laughs> now you're scarred for life? Yeah. The real question is, what monster shits on the floor, picks it up with a towel, and refolds the towel? No. And, no. She just set it down on the floor and it picked it up. I see what you're so saying. So yeah. Barbara's the monster in your scenario, who's like putting shit no, all over towels. No, it's when I picked up the towel, I saw that it was brown. Hey, lucky saying, you didn't step on it with your own foot, by the way. Believe me, I thought about that a thousand times, and I said, thank God I put this down every you time. You had to walk across the bathroom to get the mat, though. No, it was right at the front. Yeah, I don't know. I think you I should probably shit check all my socks. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I don't think I've ever had like a weird, bad experience in a hotel. Maybe it's not paying attention. How is that possible? You stay at hotels, what? I don't know. Where week? were you staying? I just can't like... stop thinking about the fact that I own brown socks and now I want to throw them away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, told, I'm absolutely going to check my bathroom floor when I get home now. We're, we're back want, to the hotel. Like, did someone not put their butthole completely in the toilet when they were shitting? Like, how does, like, how do 
people get shit in other places that are not in the toilet? Like when you guys go in a public restroom and there's shit like up the toilet? Like if I had to take a, a guess the, the theory, he probably pooped his pants and when he like pulled him down, it just kind of rolled out. Ugh. His cargo <laughs> left. It's like PUBG. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we dropping, boys? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys, uh, I, I parked at, there's a new hotel built right next to the convention center, and I parked over there uh, the day before, but I walked across, they have a sky bridge that connects it. Have you guys walked on that sky bridge? Yeah. yeah. It's pretty fucking nuts. It's, it's like three stories up. And two stories. Yeah, but it's over a creek, so the creek adds another story. <laughs> the it creek might be is two stories It is not level. over a creek, it's over a road. What's I, the story about? I, I'm, <laughs> so... So how many, how many stories down is the bottom of the Grand Canyon? <laughs> it's a good question. It's probably like 70 floors. Okay. They just build an elevator in the Grand Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> how deep is the Grand Canyon? As deep as your love. Thanks, Siri. You're a piece of shit. I mean, none of this helps me at all. They, they didn't answer it. 277 miles long? That's not, no. 18 miles. Great. Cool. Attains a depth of over a mile. Is that even right? I don't trust you. How I many... Like, well, I like just knowing... convert stories to miles. Ten, is it 10 feet per floor? Somewhere Roughly. I think a story is relative. Is a story an actual measurement? Is it... It's, it's, it's roughly 10 feet. 610 feet? Stories. She's answering what? the original question. What? Why are you trying to convert stories into miles and then into feet? I don't know. I... Just can't stop you guys thinking ever done about the shit on my floor. I know. You're disgusting. The, uh, have what, you guys ever what? gone to the Grand Canyon, like hiked down into it? I've been there twice. I did it when I was a kid. Yeah. And then I would never go back. Do you think it's deeper now? I, yeah, I guess it is on a relative basis, you know. I've, I've always wondered how more people don't die going to the Grand Canyon. Or, Same. Or people who, like, get drunk on cruise ships don't fall over the edge. Like, how does that not happen more? I think that happens. The cruise ship thing does happen. Yeah. Mm. You'd be shocked. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time, but you'd be shocked at how frequently it does happen. Or people just die on cruise ships. I read that there's, it's a completely accepted thing that there are some people who reach a point in their lives where they basically cash in their life savings, and then they just get on a boat and stay on a boat for the rest of their life. Oh, that they're, like, they're 85, and they think, oh, I probably have a couple years left, and maybe they don't. And so they have morgues on these ships where they store the dead bodies. So why would it's you got bad really fast. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Why would you want to die on a boat? Uh, I don't want to see, die anywhere. See the world. <laughs> Was that a pun? I don't know. I guess it's just everything's there, and it's super convenient. Like Everything's there? Yeah. They shrimp. even have a morgue. A lot of shrimp. That's what I would go for. You're just guaranteeing that you're going to die away from your family. I, I guess. I, I didn't interview the people, so I don't know the motivations in particular. I, I feel like that's how Gus is going to want to go out, is just to inconvenience everyone else, even beyond the grave. Like, he'll die, like, in a foreign country so that they have to ship his body back. <laughs> i got to die in international waters. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, no, I don't care. Once, like, I, like, I have no connection to the physical body. I feel like once you die, who cares? Yeah. You want to get cremated, I'm imagining? Well, the people around no, your I, dead, I, dead I don't body care. probably care yeah, a little just, bit. Like, it's like, whatever. What, whatever. Whoever's standing next to me want to die, you, you deal with it. <laughs> just don't die on this panel, man. <laughs> Man, my left arm's really tingly. No, no, no. <laughs> Massage it. Uh, but yeah, even I think even big planes, like I think like the Airbus A380, uh, in the configuration that Singapore Airlines has, they have a compartment set aside for in case someone dies on the flight. Wow. A place to store a body. Is it overhead? <laughs> yeah, because you, you got to pay 25 bucks if you want to put it in the in the, in the You got to make sure that you fit in the little carry-on thing. <laughs> Your body must be this big. <laughs> nah, he's overweight. You got to pay extra. I mean, it makes sense. You got to kind of plan for that, but it just seems morbid to make that plan. It's like the people who design self-driving cars have to write computer algorithms to decide who the car runs into and who it doesn't run into in a situation where it has to make a choice. Right. Right. Like, here's a group of five people. Here's one person. Can't just stop. What? <laughs> Stopping would be the first option. <laughs> but you have to stop in a specific direction, I guess. Which people turn. do I accelerate to? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't. You can't interview is, them. Will that backfire on us? Are we teaching 
AI who we value the most. Wow. That, Literally then, what we're teaching them, yeah. Yeah, and then if they become sentient, they know who to go after. I don't like this. Yeah, wow, yeah. I didn't think about it until right now. My, I just blew my own mind. Yeah. Does it ever freak you out? Like, you have a smart home, right? That your house is just covered in listening devices? That I are... don't have any devices that listen. You don't have, like, a Google Home or a no. Echo? No. I don't like that stuff. You know how you just talked to your phone? I didn't. I, I had to hold down the button. I disabled the, the functionality where you can talk to it. Okay. Actually, uh, Alana was Wait sleeping in today. Wait a minute. Was what? That? You did what with your phone? You know, there's a phrase you can say to make your phone acknowledge you and start listening. Yeah. I disabled that. I oh. feel like it's still a, a microphone. On it is a microphone. You have to have a phone. On. Even if you have a landline, you have a microphone in your house. I thought you turned your phone into like a walkie-talkie where you have to press a button <laughs> to talk. <laughs> Alana was sleeping in today, and I was trying to wake her up. It was like fucking 12.30, and I don't know how she was still sleeping. She wasn't answering her phone. She wasn't answering her texts. And I realized that I have echoes throughout my house or in my apartment. So I pulled up Spotify. And then what's that system of a down song where it's like, wake up? I think it's Chop Suey, right? <laughs> so I, like, I pulled that up, clicked everywhere, and then I turned it to max volume. And like I watched as it paused, and then a text came up, and she was like, I'm awake. Thank you. <laughs> Wow, what a it great works. start to the day. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great use for that. It was, it's, it's fantastic. I've, it's worked twice now. I think the other day I woke her up with like Iron Maiden or something like that. I, I'm, I'd be grateful if somebody did that to me. I'd wake up pumped as shit. I, like, I've, I really love the uh, Alexa, the Amazon Echo, yeah. because it entertains me when I'm home alone and I have nothing to do, and I just go, Alexa, tell me a joke. You. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nah, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit sad. Yeah, it's a little bit sad. I'll, sometimes, like, if I just need to hear someone talk to me, I'll like, ask her the weather a couple All times. All right, from now on, just, like, just call me. <laughs> no! <laughs> you wouldn't answer a phone call from me? I, there's like a 70% chance I would. What's that other 30 happening there? Yeah. <laughs> and then I will talk to my Alexa, ask it for a joke, and relay it to you. Thank you. You steal material from Alexa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you think anyone could just do an entire stand-up set based on jokes it learned from Alexa? That's a great idea. I was about to ask, what, what kind of jokes does it tell you, Barbara? Like, how bad are these jokes? Oh, they're, they're like, my level bad. Maybe even worse sometimes. Like, she makes Impossible. me groan. Hey. <laughs> don't, don't we have the, the is the, is the stand-up thing tonight? Yes. yes. Yeah. Can we have an, an Alexa <laughs> do a great. segment? Someone just, like, just standing next to it going, Alexa, tell me a, a joke. joke. Alexa, tell me a joke. Alexa, tell me you a should, joke. You should go do that. You should, you should go do that. No, that's I'm a going, good bit. Yeah. Five minutes. I got other stuff going on tonight. Oh, what are you doing tonight? Got the always open mixer. Oh, that's a big thing. <laughs> Very small event, so only a few people in here are probably cheering for that. So see you tonight. It might not be a small event anymore if you announced it in here. T it's ticketed. Oh, okay. If yeah. you can't go to that, you can slum it on the spot. Mm. On the spot. Don't get your hopes up, folks. <laughs> Ashley did a happy hour for the no, and it wasn't ticketed, and it like turned into mayhem. Is there yeah. a lot of people there? Yeah, I forget what panel she talked about it at, but apparently just like like the bar just got overrun with people. It was uh, between that and the the party last night that we had, and then Bloodfest and. Theater mode was also last night. Theater yeah. mode. Yeah. Got a shit ton going on this convention, man. Yeah. Did you? Were any of you at Let's Play Live? <laughs> Did you guys enjoy? <laughs> this is my. I think the favorite thing that has ever happened at any live event we've ever done. Lindsay dancing to Wrecking Ball with oh Garbo God. Man. Her interpretive dance. Holy fuck! My favorite part is I think you filmed Michael backstage. Wait, Michael's Garbo Man? Oh wait, fuck. We didn't say that. Oh God. You said that. Yeah. I filmed the back of his head, and he was behind the stage. You couldn't see him, but he was full in character. <laughs> like I was filming him from behind, and he was all like hunched up like this, like oh, honestly, <laughs> no one could see him. But he was just in full character. He was in full garbo. How was it, Gavin, uh, doing it in the convention center versus doing it in a like a theater? I thought it was surprisingly good. It felt huge. Yeah. Because we've done theaters, but they they're a lot more snug and they don't go as wide. It just felt massive. Yeah, I loved it. You can fit. Do you remember it? Did you say that's what she said? I was thinking that, but I didn't say it. That's so some thank good you. Constraint. She has never said that to Gavin. Not <laughs> once. Not a single time. That was a joke. I wasn't being serious about his genitalia. I've seen it. It's impressive. 
Very impressive. Hey. Didn't you it, guys have it like... It just moves very slowly. <laughs> so, Blaine, you said you didn't know why Alana would be sleeping until 12.30 in the afternoon? Yeah. Have you never been in a relationship with a woman ever? Because I don't want to out anybody else, but... And I don't know what Esther's like, but Gavin and I, our girlfriends will sleep until... I don't know. I mean, as long as I let them sleep, as long as I let Ashley sleep on the weekend, she will sleep that long. Sometimes guess, it's like, I don't I see wish I like could two. do that. It sounds so much better. I yeah. used to do that when I was younger, but now I feel like I'm just wasting so much of the day if I sleep past like 10. Yeah. Oh, shit. That's a sign of getting old. What? That's a sign of getting old. <laughs> it's like Indiana oh, Jones. She goes, yeah. melts away. There's so much to do. <laughs> Gotta wake up early. It's I true. <laughs> I bought something that I am so freaking happy with. Uh, it was actually, I think it was a Shark Tank thing. Uh, and I found out about it. Oh, you mean the show? I bought Shark Tank the show, yeah. No, I, <laughs> I just actually thought you bought a Shark Tank. <laughs> I was, I'm 100% oh, no, serious. I want a Shark Tank. I wanna, could you do that? Could you buy a Shark Tank? Like in just... I'm sure if you have a, a big enough You say enough yes. Place. What, do you own well, a Shark Tank? It's just a big fish tank. The, the fact that we yeah. accept that Shark Tank is a thing makes me think you could buy it. Mm. I get that I could get the tank. The sharks are the important part. Could I buy sharks? Did you hear some people stole a shark in San Antonio? They dressed it up like a baby? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they went to an aquarium with a stroller. They took a shark out of a shark tank. They put it in the stroller and swaddled it like a baby and walked it out of the aquarium. <laughs> and they got the shark back and it's okay. How do the sharks survive the out of water? as a baby for that, that is a good long. question. How long can well, I was Maybe they had well, some water in their vehicle or something that I think, they just mm. put it in? They had a shark tank. <laughs> they had a shark I think shark, I mean sharks so and fish, said wet towel. they breathe oxygen. So it's just, I think their gills aren't efficient out of water. So it's still, they have some respiration, but I think it's not nearly as much oh, really? as they need. Yeah. yeah, we're not like that. We can't breathe a little bit no, under You cannot access the oxygen in the water. No. No. Also, some sharks are small. Go on. Go ahead. So a small, let me think about this, small shark. I mean, your, your shark tank doesn't have to have a great white in it. Oh, I thought you meant shark, a small shark could live longer out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, oh. Why, uh, why would I want to get a small shark though? You want the, the, the get it, you know, I don't know, you're the one who wants. a little baby shark in there floating around. Oh, that sounds pretty cute. Wait, pretty what, cute. What was the product you bought? We got, we just deviated way off the path. Oh, you want to oh, actually yeah. finish a story on the podcast? <laughs> Uh, Gavin, I got an idea though. You and I, we should go on Shark Tank and sell Shark Tanks. We should like uh, Has anyone your, done that? For you, I don't know. Somebody <laughs> must have tried, I think. It needs to be sort of afford, and maybe it needs to be inflatable. Right, like a portable Shark Tank. Yeah. We could use this thing, like you don't, it's obviously super convenient when you want to take a shark somewhere to dress it up like a baby and put it in a carriage. <laughs> this is just a portable shark tank. They, they also refer to those investors as sharks, right? That's like the whole gimmick. Yeah. So would you make them have to get in and try it out? Like jamming Mark Cuban into a little glass cube? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sounds awesome. Oh, or what if it's a shark tank that's shaped like a tank? Ooh. Oh, like a like like the military yeah. tank. Yeah, like a or shark. what if it's a tank that fires sharks? <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Ugh. Yeah, a shark tank. That'd suck to be in the tank, like, loading the sharks up. <laughs> that would be a really hard job. Well, is it like a fin slot? Yeah. Isn't that... Yeah. Isn't That's how that you know you got them in the right way. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that how Sharknado started? What? <laughs> so to answer your question, Blaine, mm. I bought a bed jet. A it's what? A, it's a bed jet. Okay, let me oh, guess. Jet oh, that oh, let's, take, let's take guesses it's at what that is. It's a jet think, for No, wait, wait, wait. Let's I think it. I know what this is. Go ahead. You said a bed jet? It's a bed jet. Okay, I think a bed jet is a fan that blows up under your blanket to circulate air around you, like with a jet of air. Anybody else? I was going to guess the exact same. I'm going to guess that it's like one of those, you know those little race car beds that kids would get? Yeah. It's like that, but it's a jet instead. Blaine, do you have a Now I want that <laughs> instead. <laughs> Damn it! I had I had this one girlfriend who couldn't wake up from an alarm clock, so she had like basically a vibrator under her pillow that was an alarm clock. An alarm so, clock. No, no, no. That, that's that's why it was there. That's why the vibrator was under the pillow. It's an alarm clock. For some reason, she woke up like seven times a night. We don't know why. <laughs> bed jet. I'm imagining it's just like a pops you out of bed or something that makes you get out of bed. I don't know. What the fuck is it? 
So the bed jet is Gus. You are correct. You get a point. Ooh. Uh, but it actually comes with an actual. It comes with a uh, special sheet as well. So it's like it's this contraption that plugs in. It's got a fan on it, and it's also for heat. But I would never use the heat function because oh, no. I couldn't stand that. I'm most people. I love those like sleep in like 50 degree temperatures. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So this thing's amazing. It's yeah, a polar bear. And it's like a comforter. It's got a hose, which looks a little weird. It kind of looks like I've got a medical condition of some kind, and this is like my home apparatus. <laughs> it's got a hose that comes up and goes into the, the foot of the bed, and then it blows air, but it doesn't go on Ashley's side because there's like a well, seam. Is this like what? a Roomba, and it just travels around and fans out things, what or is it stationary? No, it's just air. It's so, just air, dude. Oh, okay. With it, so, it, it fills up like a balloon. Like when I turn it on, it looks like I'm like sleeping Farting. in this Snoopy float at the Macy's Day why, Parade. Why, why does Ashley not want bed jet? Yeah. Because she gets, she's, she, she's cold or already, so she's cold. But she, there is one for her side, and I guess when it gets colder, whenever that fucking happens in Austin, it will, uh, we'll use the heat on her side. So, so do you guys can't cuddle anymore? Yeah, well, how does yeah, this affect she's cuddle? not a brave, uh, we're working through all that. Yeah, okay. we're working through all that. Now we have the thing where she used to like, sh like shump on me because I was super warm, and yeah. she would like come and like siphon off my warmth. But now I'm like a block of ice, which is awesome. I like but the way she it won't touch me. So cuddling is no longer spontaneous. You actually have to like change climate. Let me turn to have this a off. Yeah, I have like a sleep number. So Alana has hers like super low numbered. Mine's like oh, super high. So it's like we're on different floors. Like one of us has to like climb down to the other one to cuddle. Why do you want to be able? Surely you're gonna dry out in the night. Why would I dry out? Because it's air. There's air blowing all over you all night. You're surrounded by air anyway, dude. <laughs> yeah, there's, air, air, there's air everywhere. It's not moving over your junk and eyes and mouth. Your eyes are closed when you sleep and your mouth is closed. Oh, there's one right there. Oh, that's it. That's it. That's what happens if it goes into reverse in the night? I. <laughs> well, or, then you climb out <laughs> in the morning. Or what happens when it becomes sentient and it knows who we value versus who we don't value and it starts eating you? Blaine. <laughs> So if I was pitching this product, I would pitch it to you as saying there's a mode where you can hit reverse and you can fart and it sucks the farts out from under the bed sheets. You'd That's, buy that. I, that is not bad because sometimes <laughs> you're like, I have a weighted blanket which just traps everything down there too. So when you open it up, it's like a crypt. <laughs> Speaking of farts. Go ahead. Who was at the platinum party last night? <laughs> uh, I couldn't stop farting all night. So if you came and met me, I'm sorry if you smelt something funky. I farted on you, and I totally crop dusted everyone who I met. Last night. What did you eat yesterday? I don't know, but you know when you have those farts that just kind of roll out of your anus? Like, you can't... I, I, feel like I think I have an me. answer for how you found shit in your hotel bathroom. Yep. <laughs> Mystery is unraveling before our eyes. I'm going to run to that bathroom right over there. <laughs> We're because it's, it's just real Hey, close. guys, if anybody wants Blaine's autograph... No, no, no. <laughs> Should That's announce. what happened to me. Are you peeing? Yeah. Right, Damn it. And RTX was going so well up until Someone now. Someone go give him a piece of toilet paper. Don't do it. Don't go in there with him. Don't go in there with him. I don't think the bed jet's a good idea. So can I ask you, uh, Gus? Don't, don't do, do it. it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. it. <laughs> so, Gus, can I ask you, I know you don't like giving out personal information, but do you sleep more or does Esther sleep more? What's going on with laughter in the bathroom? What, 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 what does that entail? What is going on? Is, is I heard that, laughter. Usually that means somebody saw Blaine's penis. That's their reaction <laughs> to that. Do, do, do you think Blaine has already grabbed the toilet paper? <laughs> oh, right. Why, we should have, we should have documented it. Oh, so, well. I, I prefer being cold when I'm asleep. I'm like you. Ye? Yeah. I want to be as cold. We both actually, I think, want to be as cold as possible. You and Esther. Yes. Not me and you. Sleeping yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah thank not you. you. My Let's wife clarify and I, that. Yeah. Uh, both want to be as cold as possible. We like that. But does she, does she sleep more than you do? More? Like, oh, who I, I'm sorry. I thought you said warm. Yeah. More. Um, like, in, the, in Saturday, you guys wake up. No, we wake up at the same time. We both, did it, guys. We, bo <laughs> <laughs> we both get the exact same amount. Occasionally, she might sleep in a little bit, but it's rare. It's not like a common thing. Okay. Okay. I, I did a toilet paper for comedic effect, and now I don't know what to do with it. Just leave it. <laughs> did Anybody you use want it? Blaine's toilet paper? Is that used? No. What do you think, Gavin? There's like a giant brown stain. Yes, it is. 
That's disgusting, dude. It's not used. I've grabbed it out for a comedic effect and stuck it in my ass crack. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny feces. <laughs> I feel like the whole point of sleeping in a cold room is that you get to be cozy and warm under the covers. I'm working that part out. I agree with you a little bit, yeah. but it's just... Otherwise, you sleep what? on top. Yeah, I guess so, but then, then Ashley's under the covers and I'm on top, what? and it's like cuddling with a condom, like full body. <laughs> <laughs> it's just weird. One it's year, just weird. One year, we, since both Esther and I like sleeping cold, one year we decided to play chicken when it finally started getting cold in Austin. We wanted to see who would be the first to give in and turn the heater on. And we said, let's see how far we can get into winter without turning on the heater, and who can deal with the cold. Were you just in the living room with mittens and stuff? <laughs> it was bad. It got to the point where it was like 40 degrees at night, which is cold for Austin, and we were both like trying to sleep, and then finally like one day we both reached a truce. We were like, listen, <laughs> we know we're both cold. Let's just turn the heater on and just acknowledge neither of us lost. And we're like, yes, okay, we will turn the heater on, and we're both fine. You both walked away like, winners. I'd like to imagine this took place at dinner when there was like a grilled chicken that was like a frozen block, and you're like... <laughs> it was so cold, I don't know why we did that. <laughs> how, how many days did you make it in? It, it was like 40, so it was far. It must have been like early January by that point. You made a savings with the electric company, so good, good for you. Mm. Barb, did you have d dessert at that dinner that we were at the other night? Did you have any of that dessert? They call me Barn for a second. Barn? Uh, did, you, did you have? No, I, I left early to check out Let's Play Live. Oh, damn it. What you was know, the dessert? Well, it's one of the, it's a, there were this, like, these little things. Like There was a little piece of uh, cake. It was like a sampler and then a little Was tart, it little? A tart. It's little. Like, Why are you drooling? So, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm not. But it's like, you know, it, it, the restaurants, a lot of the stuff they give to you is basically just already pre-prepared and frozen. It's just nicer versions of that. A I lot of like places. little desserts because I never want, like, sometimes places give you, like, a hunk of cake. Totally agree with that. And it's like, I can't finish that, but, like, little sampler pieces is perfect. The problem was, these were still frozen. Like, oh. watching people try to, like, cut this little tart in half and you'd, like, press with your fork, but they were that perfect, like, geometric shape where when you press hard enough, they just shot, like, <laughs> across the room. So that, that literally happened to, like, two or three different people at this dinner. We had these so were you just tarts. standing by that table like this? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that good. It was okay. Mm. You guys, uh, you guys uh, watched the food vlog that we did last year for RTX. <laughs> Anyone we, go to any of those places? I, did you see that uh, Home Slice tweeted at us? Yeah. It, the big red thing, right? Well, they tweeted at yeah. Rooster Teeth fans. Yeah, they. Uh, I guess the Home Slice down on South Congress. They have big red in a bottle which is not on the menu, but if you ask for it, that they'll bring it out to you. Big you know? Red. Which, I guess if you're, is Big Red a Texas thing? It's definitely as, like, southern, I, I, I associate it as being Texas primarily, yeah. I love Big Red. It's pretty good. It's Big pretty Red good. is so good. It's unfortunate that we talk about Home Slice with such high regard, because I know that when I go there tomorrow, it's gonna be like 100 people, and the line will be like out the door. So they have rats. You don't want to go there. Oh, no. <laughs> no I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Home Slice is amazing. You guys should try it while you're in town. It's literally what, and this was, man, we had, we were, had a vlogging panel yesterday with me, uh, Ellie, and Stephen Septic. And I'm we were sorry. talking about some stuff. Hey, Stephen, what's up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about, like, beforehand, we were talking about some different ideas we had. And one of the ideas I had was uh, for continuing Ellie vlogs, I was going to make her go with somebody for a week and you basically have to live as that person and Blaine I was super excited about her like shadowing you and like she would have to eat every single thing that you ate and she would have to like work out as much as you work out and I was really looking forward to your Sunday tradition which is getting the massive home slice pizza and you eat an entire pizza every Sunday yeah How it's a large don't you also get a milkshake uh, I used to go to Amy's ice cream, but then I realized that that probably wasn't the healthiest choice, and I was probably eating like 7,000 calories in a day, so. Cheat day. So it's just the pizza part. <laughs> it's just the enormous That'd be pizza. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's only 4,000 calories now. It, they're enormous. It's good. I mean, I could probably do it. I could definitely do it, but I don't know how you do it every single week. Yeah, I can only eat half of that pizza. No, I just power through that shit, yeah. Here's you just watch you a do. good movie. You take it. You fold it in half. Big taco. And then you fold it in half again, and then you just eat it. But are you full towards the end? Are you just like now. trying to get it down? <laughs> I'm in pain by the end, and then I you always question. You could just not eat the end. I 
could not, but then I'll have like leftovers on Monday, which is back on diet day, and then I'm like, oh, I guess I gotta break my diet, and then I stretch pizza out, and it's. But you does know. it count if you just ate it already? You I still ate it. Right. It cancels it out, though. It's still the same amount of calories. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, but it's supposedly with cheat day, isn't the theory that your body can only process so many calories in a day? Isn't that the theory behind cheat day? The theory is I just want to eat shit that I can't normally eat during the week, right. so I scarf on, my fucking face. On my off. cheat day, I eat seven pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't eat them all on the same day, so I, I save them. I just feel like... <laughs> I feel like that would make me enormously hungry on Monday. Like, if I establish where I don't eat, which is not very regularly, but if I can establish that, then I feel like I get less hungry over time. Whereas if I eat a lot, my, my body says, like, that was fucking great. Let's do that again. Did you stop no. to stretch out instantly? Yeah. Mondays is when Rooster Teeth provides lunch for the staff, and by then I'm, like, still bloated and, like, farting constantly from all the cheesy gas. You're a nightmare. Then I'm like, I'm good. I don't need any more food. I'm like, Monday is the worst because I'm like just coming off of that pizza high. So I'm just like bloated the whole day. Yeah, it's not great. But no, man, I love home slice. Though. Are you lactose intolerant? Uh, I don't think so. No. I think I might be. But it's the lactose intolerance that when I eat cheese, too much cheese, I can't poop. It like clogs me up. Uh, is that not lactose intolerance? Don't. Just that's, normal. That's normal. Like super tolerant. Awesome. How much cheese are you eating? Like a pound at a time? What are we talking about? Wheel. Yeah, I mean, cheese boards are like my weakness. I love a good cheese board. Yeah. But like I'll get one for myself instead of like a table. But I feel like a cheese board is like 30 bucks and you get about two ounces of cheese across the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I do that and I order a whole pizza for myself too. I, I, the, I the read little. somewhere that bears, when they're preparing for hibernation, will eat like twigs and other weird hard to digest things to plug up their buttholes so that they can store more food. Is that true? They like you basically, read it. They build so they, a dam. They're based, they're like building an anal cork or dam, yeah, to <laughs> block it all out. How do they undo it? I don't like I, do Eventually, they, the pressure overcomes the stoppage? Or they just like finger, the, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> or I guess like because spring has come around, they start to bloom and it becomes soft and just comes out. Ah, uh, flower. I don't know. <laughs> the, the leaves on the twigs bloom. <laughs> That's uh, I mean, you're really the one who read it. So you would, you would be the one what to is know. Like, what's why, I don't know why we would know this random fact. I thought you were like a bear guy. A bearologist? So I call it bear man. I, don't know. I love seeing bears when they come out of hibernation because they're like, they've lost a ton of weight. You know, they, they basically go three months without eating anything mm. and they just burn off like everything they've been packing on for the years. I don't know why. It's just something about that I love. It's like, if that bear can do it, I can do it too. <laughs> so why can't humans do it? Would they just die? Bernie's just getting himself ready to fight a bear. So he does everything a bear does too. That'd be awesome. I'd fight a bear. You would, Have you, you seen would last Revenant? 10 seconds. Well, I, I, I'd kick it in the butt plug or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> It just starts shooting. Cheese. But that would just make it ready for more winter. <laughs> right. Then it would go to sleep, and then I win. <laughs> and I Good it. point. Yeah, see? I'm smart. What, do you, what is the most calorie-dense liquid? Would it be like olive oil or something? Maybe, yeah. Those, uh, those rations, remember those marine rations that yeah. I had? They, those were like 68% coconut oil. And then apparently sawdust from the way they tasted, you know, glued <laughs> together. But they were these super dense bricks. And they're meant to put on boats when you get in kind of an emergency situation. And uh, they're just the, basically the highest calorie content for the lowest possible weight. And we did a lot of research on this stuff when we were packing for The Amazing Race. We tried to figure out, like, what was the highest calories with the least pack weight possible. And we determined that... It's going to sound weird. Stroop waffles. You ever have a Stroop oh, waffle? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had them on planes. They're amazing. They're amazing. It's like two little, like, thin little cookies with, like, a layer of caramel smush in the yeah. middle or something. And uh, we packed a bunch of them. And I remember when we first started the race, a lot of the people were like, wow, you guys have, like, a lot of gadgets and a lot of packed stuff. And, and they even made fun of us for packing snacks. By about the third or fourth leg, we were trading those for, like, incredible favors. <laughs> like, they became enormously valuable. It was, like, currency on the road. Dude, the, the, honestly, the secret of The Amazing Race is uh, that it doesn't really come across in the show, but the, you, the way people react and the decisions they make are based on this. It's really, it's so much about 
sleep deprivation and calorie deficits because by the end of a leg, you, you know, we started one leg in Cartagena, Colombia on the beach. We ended that leg at the top of a mountain in the French Alps. And it's just the amount of travel and airport time and everything. We probably over the course of, you know, 36, 48 hours, we probably slept like three or four hours mm -hmm. and then ate almost nothing that entire time because we only had like a hundred bucks to do that. So we had to save all the money and not buy anything. So yeah, that's why people like, like why the hell did this person make that decision? It's because they're probably <laughs> insane by the time they got to that point. Yeah, I've been at the point where I've, I've been seeing stuff that's not there just because I haven't gone to bed. Oh, you did a, you worked a job one time that was like two days straight, didn't you? A yeah, I just didn't go to sleep and then I went to work and I was, I was losing it. I was working at the supermarket, like forgetting what I was doing and getting lost and then I fell asleep on potatoes. There was a night recently where I was so exhausted and sleep deprived. I think it was when I'd just gotten in from a convention and I landed at like two in the morning because of flight delays. And I was with Trevor, and we were like joking around, and he was doing that quote from, uh, I think it's The Hobbit, where someone says, I eats it whole. But for some reason, I was trying to say it, and I kept saying, I eat its whole. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept saying it over and over again, and he kept laughing, and I was like, what? I'm just doing the quote. And he's saying, you're, you're saying, I eat its whole. <laughs> and I was like, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I couldn't figure, I was so sleep deprived that I couldn't figure out why it was wrong. But yeah, then, did yeah. you guys have that on Bloodfest too? Because Bloodfest has a lot of night scenes yeah. in it, um, and there's a, there's specific rules when you're filming a movie uh, that you have to have so much time between when you wrap the day before and when you start the next day. You, it's a union, union rules where it's I think it's ten hours of turnaround time. I think Something it's like that. that. Yeah, and uh, obviously because people have to be able to get rest and go to sleep. Uh, but what happens is you end later and later as the week goes on. So by the end of the week, you're like starting at four in the morning. So your schedule just kind of shifts along with it. Yeah. That's what we had on the first laser team. Not the second one. The second one was super easy because we were on a, on a set the entire time, basically. I think it worked out well, though, for Bloodfest because it, it the nature of the film and what we were, you know, the genre of it. It's a horror movie. So like all of us are supposed to be kind of loopy, yeah. kind of out of it. Um, extremely sweaty and confused so like a, a lot of it actually worked out for having these late night shoots where that's actually what we were without acting yeah <laughs> and who's here nick's here robbie's here yep robbie k nick rutherford owen oh, edgerton owen is here yeah he's a, the writer and director yep. of Bloodfest. anybody else that's in the cast? i'm here jacob's not here <laughs> oh yeah gus is here sorry yeah don't forget craig craig was my character's name yep is that true yeah Craig. Yeah. I, I auditioned for Craig, and I'm glad I didn't get the part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But yeah, it was fun, anyway. Yeah? I, I, I don't know if we could, I guess we could spoil it. Blaine has an awesome cameo. Ah. So look out for it in the movie. So you thought about auditioning for a role, didn't, and you still got into the film? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. I got a lot of screen time, too. Like, a lot. Did you? Yeah. I had my own close-up and everything. It was pretty cool. They gave me a trailer, so that was yeah. fun. Wow. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I had a trailer, too. I hung out there. It was cool. How much money do you think you cost the movie? I don't know. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. You also had to, like, sit outside for the majority of it with bugs and shit touching you and everything like that. Yeah. It was not great. It was a lot of walking around in the woods, in the dark, with lots of bugs. Oh. And weird bug bites. And then there was also some scenes of laying in the woods, in the dark, in the bugs. <laughs> it was not great. Mine scene, I remember I had to text Alana because I was like, hey, heads up, there's going to probably be some like partial nudity and women are going to be like giving me the lap dance basically for my scene. Are you cool with that? Because there was just like four pretty vampires. Yeah, it was rough, man. He's tough. So... Who did our piss so off? So all the goodwill <laughs> you built up by calling her, you just ruined just now by saying that. What? You built up all this goodwill calling her and saying, are you okay with this? And now you come on the podcast, you're like, yeah, they were fucking hard as shit. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> so uh, that's, we haven't talked about this yet. There's a big announcement regarding Alana this week. Yeah, she's going to be part of Funhouse now. Yeah, she's moving to Funhouse. 
Is she just slowly moving closer to you, like tiny amounts at a time? Yeah, baby steps, baby yeah. steps. By like uh, the time we're 50, we might move in together. <laughs> no, I'm super excited. I'm also kind of hesitant because it's like her, she's going in with a group of like basically my four idiot brothers and my one like weird sister. So yeah, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm super thrilled. And uh, we actually did the move from San Francisco to LA. And we had to kind of keep it hush hush because we didn't want people to, to know. Uh, but yeah. LA is going to be a lot nicer to visit than San Francisco, that's for mm -hmm. sure. You could also work with a lot more people out there when you go visit. That's true. Collaborate. I actually, is Wes here? Because that son of a bitch spoiled, almost spoiled her getting the job at Funhouse. Who almost spoiled it? Wes. Wes. Oh. Yeah. I was at dinner one time, I was talking to somebody, and I was like, yeah, she's going to get a job at Funhouse, Funhouse, Funhouse. And he was like over there recording on Instagram, and then Reddit was like, Blaine said this. So well, it sounds like you wrote it. Yeah, it sounds like you <laughs> spoiled it. I didn't know it was being live streamed, Gavin. That's fair. I still do think, I, I think two things phones need. They need a light when they're live streaming. Like almost yeah. like we have it in the studio when you are recording in the broadcast area. Although nobody pays attention to it. They put red lights right. on everywhere. In stage nobody five. pays attention to it. Nobody, nobody. They see the red lights and they're just like, ah, why is the red light on? And scream at the top of their lungs. Uh, the other thing I wish uh, phones had is when you dictate a message to somebody, it should put that in a different font or a little, like a little icon that says this was dictated, like a little yeah, microphone. Yeah, there's a lot of text I get from you and I just think you're an idiot. It's a lot of homonyms <laughs> and everything, yeah. But there's sometimes when I'm replying to a text and I'm like, I'm at home, I could easily type it out, but I'm too lazy to, so I just dictate it. And I don't necessarily want people to know that I'm just like, yeah, cool, uh, well, let me know how your surgery goes. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, well, they might assume that you're busy doing something. You're taking time to do it in a situation that you shouldn't be texting, but you can do speech to text. Yeah. I but guess it's, like, weird because when someone texts me, I don't read the text in their voice, but if I know that it was dictated, I might read it in their voice the way everyone dictates a text. Oh, yeah. Yes. I <laughs> will be there. Thank you, period. <laughs> No, the shit was on the bathroom <laughs> when I got here. <laughs> I, I had, uh, you're talking about Funhouse, so made me think about this. I had maybe the most inefficient way to shoot something with them recently. They, uh, they asked me to break some discs for a demo disc, uh, and Elise sent the discs via UPS. She like overnighted them to the office. I got them. Then I immediately got on a plane and went to L.A. and filmed the breaking right outside of their office on the street. <laughs> so you brought the discs with you? I brought the discs with me and broke them there at their office. How did you break yours? What was your strategy? What was that? What did you, what did you do to break it? Because I also I was, did one. So I watched yours where, uh, was it you were watching The Notebook with the disc? Yep. And I was, I was so intimidated. I thought, I thought that that one was so great. I was like paralyzed. I didn't know what to do oh, in order thanks, to break Gus. mine. Because I felt like I really, I, I was like, I have to top that. And I didn't know um, how to do it. So I tried to, to act out in different ways. I had three discs, so there were three different breaks. Uh, one of them was I pretended I was in virtual demo disc. <laughs> and I was breaking the disc, and yeah. I was like, broke it in real life. Uh, another one, I pretended like I was prepping food, and I was chopping it. And I chopped up the disc, and then like picked one up and ate it. That's a good one. And then the other one, I was out of ideas, so I just broke it in front of my face. Sounds good. And if it makes you feel better, they already cut all those scenes, so yeah, you're they're in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they, 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 I know they didn't because I watched it. I made sure. I scrubbed. I, I, I didn't watch the whole video. I just scrubbed for my parts. Like, yeah, I'm in there. I got to say, I got to say, L.A. West is shaping up pretty well. You know, it took a while to kind of... see L.A.? Yeah. Let us say L.A. West? L.A. West. That doesn't make any sense. L.A. West. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Our RT West is our LA offices. It's, it's shaping up really well because now it's like it took a while to get everybody in one place, but now the fun house is there. Uh, Ryan Hall moved. He has an office there still, but he's now in Austin. And then Sugar Pine's there as well. So I don't know, it's, a, it's a cool space to go and hang out in. It might be, I don't know, a little bit cooler than ours. I really like where like the Funhouse support group is. They're in like this incredible, it used to be a, a podcast set for something else. It's like a two tiered. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, that one's really cool. It almost looks like an old school library with like the rolling ladders and stuff like that. I'm actually surprised they don't use it more often for like shooting funhouse stuff. But they take look at this. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh, man. What? That was working. Working. Yeah, you, you just gotta ask. How'd you ask? Did you text? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're busy over here. You're, you're texting away. Well, you have 15 minutes left. What do we want to talk about? 
Mm -hmm. Oh, the new RTX location. That's we can announce that, can't we? No, I don't think so. There's no new RTX. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, is, is it's not even announced that we're doing another RTX? I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I will can, kill if you. Guys, <laughs> if you guys pay me, I'll tell you where it's from, where it's going. Bernie wants to tell you guys so badly because he loves spoiling every single announcement it. before someone else could do it. I just, I don't feel like there should be any secrets at all. There, it's, all right. It's not a secret. It's because like the, there's no contracts yet, as far as I know. You like, are correct, not, Barbara. Nothing yeah. has been signed. Nothing there has is been not. signed. So we're, technically, there is no other. RTX. How are you gonna get out of this one? We're trying to, we're trying to so, find hotels. So about that swatting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He will not oh, succumb to your yeah, peer pressure. What, you were asking, you were asking how you could get fired. They won't, they won't let me talk. I'm ready to say, I'm ready to spill the beans. Actually, that lady was a plant. I knew she was gonna ask that question. RTX, the next RTX will be at her house. <laughs> Everyone just show up, single file line, put shit on the bathroom floor if you want to, it's fine. <laughs> What's funny is no matter how many events you do or no matter where you do events, people always want it closer. I think I told this, I don't remember where I told the story, I told the story recently. I mean, oh, it was in an interview you and I did the other day, Bernie. Mm -hmm. Years ago, we were going to uh, an event, I think we were going to Fan Expo and uh, fan Expos in Toronto. And before the event, someone had emailed me and said, hey, I live in Toronto. When's the next time you're gonna come up to this area? I would love to meet you guys. And I said, oh, hey, you're in luck. We're gonna be at Fan Expo in a couple of weeks. You can come down and see us there. And then he replied, yeah, but I live in the suburbs. Um, when, are you gonna come <laughs> when are you gonna come out here? I was like, dude, I don't know what you want, man. <laughs> I'm already going to another country. <laughs> So like no, no matter where you announce or no matter where you go, there's still occasionally people who are like, yeah, that's still not close enough. So thank you all for coming to Austin for RTX. Thank you. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Any, anyone get I'm actually nervous about saying RTX London, but that's clearly been announced. That right? has been announced. <laughs> anyone going to RTX London in a month? Are you really? Oh, wow. Where are you from? You're from the UK? This was a super inefficient way to see us. We're gonna be there in like 30 days. You're like Gus's demo discs. What's that? You've been in this country for two months? A two month holiday? Yeah. Oh man. Can that we trade lives for a second? <laughs> that whole immigration thing isn't working out for us, is it? Like, no, 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 no. Tighten swatting. that shit up. What's going no, that, on? That person's white, it's okay. Yeah. Oh. It's true. <laughs> Did you, when they, were, they just recently defunded something to help fund the wall. Coast Guard. Coast Guard. We do. Who needs to guard the coast? That's not. Nobody's coming via the water, I think they right? Also, they also got rid of the protection of, from using pesticides to not kill bees. Oh, yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Who so needs bees? If, if you're foreign here, start a business where you sell bees back to the United States because you'll make a shitload that, of money when everyone's that's starving. That's a great idea. Bee coin. <laughs> bee coin. <laughs> bee coin, but every coin is a bee. <laughs> oh, did you see that thing McDonald's is making those Mac coins? They sent yeah. a bunch of them to Michael and Lindsay, or just Michael? Or but and it, Barbara. It made me think you about you when you all went to Sweden and you didn't understand the exchange rate, so you based everything on how much a sa how many sandwiches it's worth? Yeah, this Which is the exact same thing. It's a currency where the currency is one sandwich. Hmm. I wonder what my salary is in Big Macs. <laughs> it won't you... be that hard to do the math. They <laughs> sent you a, they sent you a bunch of them, right? Yeah, I think it was fifty. Wow, fifty different coins. It's in a glass case. So I'm gonna eat fifty Big Macs. Do it. Uh, one a day for the next. Uh... Do you fifty days? That's the math on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think of the amount of weeks, but I should have just said 50 days because that would have uh, avoided this whole situation. So. <laughs> do you have to report that to the IRS? <laughs> Income? Yeah, do I? It's like... How much a Big Mac? You received currency, right? A Mac yeah. coin. I want to say Big Mac's what, like $2 Two something? But what makes it currency? $2.70? Uh, $3.00? What makes it how much is a $3 Big Mac? $3.57? Dude, you're rolling in it. You got like 200 bucks worth of Big Macs. Holy fuck. Yeah. yeah you That's sure. just the sandwich, not the meal, right? 
I assume it's just a sandwich. Uh, yeah, I'm so going to be the Mac Daddy of. Reasons if you here. hold on to it, and the price of a Big Mac continues to go up in the future, then you're investing in Big Mac. Hey, Blaine, this let me ask you a question. Three dollars and fifty-seven cents. So. When you're looking at nutritional stuff, like let's say you're at McDonald's. I know you don't normally eat at a McDonald's, but let's say you're at McDonald's or it's a place where they have calories on the menu. Mm. What is the one thing that you always be like, it's worth it for the calories? A whole home slice pizza? <laughs> that would like be true. Uh, no, like taking stuff off of a burger. Like if you, like the Jimmy John sandwich, if you get it down to like the no bread and then no sauce, it's like 60 calories. It's just redis, lettuce and uh, turkey. <laughs> redis. <laughs> <laughs> I like sauces, like barbecue, and I never tried the Szechuan though. Was that any good or was that just all just tough? It was good. Oh, we had it. We was had okay. It. Sweet and sour sauce all the way, baby. I love their sweet and sour sauce, yeah. I like hot mustard. For, mi for, for yeah. McNuggets? I was very unenthusiastic. <laughs> nah, it's Hot like mustard fans, don't be ashamed. Sweet, Rock it. Sweet there you sour go. Sour sauce, barbecue sauce, maybe on occasion. They have a buffalo sauce now. Uh, I like, like a new addition. I like the buffalo sauce. It's good stuff, man. Yeah. I, can should, I can put buffalo on anything. Should we do an episode of a million McCoins, but? <laughs> <laughs> Could we get them to sponsor it? Hell yeah, that'd be awesome. A million Big Macs, but. <laughs> Sounds weird. Let me say it that way. We can talk tomorrow. Let's we'll see if we can McDonald's get a, get a sponsorship for it. We'll do 50 Mac what? coins. So how did you, well, so McDonald's just said, here, Barbara, here's a bunch of. I don't know why. I think it's because, I mean, I tweet about McDonald's probably more than the average person. Okay. Because I love McDonald's. But I tweeted about it on my birthday saying that there was only two things I wanted. One was like this big, long, like actual answer. And the second one was uh, McNuggets. And I think the sh one of the chefs for McDonald's, Mike something, follows a lot of us and follows yeah. Rooster Teeth. Yeah. And I think he probably saw that tweet and, and hooked me up. What a cool nice. job that would be. Yeah. He's like the chef at McDonald's. He gets to design stuff. It also seems like we reached a point in time where, Gus, you might remember this better than them, but like in like the, like the mid-90s, late-90s, menus were a lot less fluid than they are now. Oh, then yeah. they, they just started making up sandwiches to put on stuff. And now it's like, every time I go in, there's some random new thing, like a smokehouse it, it's, burger. It's, it's, it's gotten to the point where it stresses me out, and I can't go through drive throughs because I have to take time to look at menus. Like, things change all the time. It doesn't matter what fast food restaurant it is. Like, mm -hmm. it's always different, and I don't know who's, who makes what anymore. Yeah. I know McDonald's has a Big Mac, I know Burger King has a Whopper, but everything else, what is it? I don't Chalupa. Know. Taco Bell. <laughs> Sorry, it was Taco a quiz, Bell. but you Good failed. Call. Why don't you just look at the menu on your phone before you get to the menu in the drive-thru? What? I don't want to do that. I don't know. I don't have a good answer for that. But it's in the audience. I, mean, I, feel, I feel like a lot of times on at fast food restaurants, the, the menu when you go to their website is just like a generic menu and doesn't have everything that's actually there. They, have, like, they always have like regional things and right. stuff like that. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. different. Which makes it even more confusing. Would you like your car more now that you have a Tesla if the screen just replaced with the menu when you drove into a drive Ooh, if you could make an order from there? Hey, yes. your car's actually weird, though. Your car doesn't have a dashboard. Like, there's no like, steering wheel. There's no wheel. instruments. There's no instruments. Right. It's just, it don't, if I may, it looks like your car, it looks like a countertop. It's just a steering wheel and no display. Yes. And then you've got a little, dis or a Little display, it's a huge display down here, and that's everything like speedometer and everything yes. is over here. It's yes. down, wait, where? Like, it's in like you're driving, uh -huh. it's here. That seems kind of wrong. Like, no, shouldn't it be like right? It's not that bad. Instead of looking down, you look there. Oh, okay. But your dashboard is like literally just straight yeah, so across. So there's nothing. Yeah. So if you have to do anything in your car, I mean, it's like texting and driving. You have to have your no, eyes down here. No, it's not like texting and driving. It's not at all like that. Texting, you, have, you definitely have to look a lot more. I feel like it should all be heads up in the, wind, in the windscreen anyway. I would like that. That, that would be that awesome. Was, surely all of it goes away at some point. They used to have that. I knew there were cars like my friends had, and they were not new cars when my friends got them, like in the early 90s. And they had heads up displays, like Nissan's had them. I remember that. There was like a little reflector, and there was a little panel that would tell you on the windshield what your speed yeah, was. Yeah, why don't we do that anymore? I don't know. I'd like to imagine it's because like an advertising firm got hold of it and then they started like popping up ads in the windshield and you're like, ah. <laughs> Killed yeah. By Paul Look at Mark. that. Look at that. That's the that's the Model Three uh, dashboard. It's that's just cool. so you see, it's not that distracting. Instead of just looking straight down, you look a little to the. I feel side. like pe it's just not what people are used to, and that's why everyone's saying right. it's weird. Right. Once you get really once you get used to it, it's fine. 
But where does the Weird. submarine for the children go? <laughs> Thailand, obviously. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> You think, you think Tesla's going to be okay? You what? They yeah. Posted a, they posted, was that me making that pop? Uh, yeah. They posted a record loss of something they like that. They also posted record revenue, and the stock went up 16%. Okay. So I, th I think we're seeing a lot of weird narrative around that. It seems like there's an agenda. Against... Yeah, I think it's almost like the biggest industry in the world has an incentive to stop a company that doesn't utilize them. Mm -hmm. Something about pumping shit out of the ground wants to s make sure we keep doing that. And burning it. And I'm not sure why. Yeah. I was thinking about that with climate change. So we pump the, the oil out of the ground, we burn it, and then it's slowly killing us with climate change. Essentially, it's like the slowest way the dinosaurs could kill us. It's like they did. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, humans and dinosaurs didn't live at the same time, but it's like, they had a plan you know, <laughs> for how they were going to get us. You, well, I mean, are you excited to be burnt and kill the next race after us? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Because you'll, you'll probably be burnt as a fossil one day. It, well, it's a lot cooler to say, like, how did you die? It's like, uh, you know, climate change raised the temperature by five degrees. It's easier to just say T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot more noble death, I think. Do you think you get, a be you get better? No. Get, what? <laughs> no, just in general, I don't get better at anything. I feel like the fossil of a T-Rex should make stronger fuel. Yeah, I think most of the oil we get now is just plankton. It's like, we, we think of it as dying. Yeah, it's shitty, right? Shitty. Yeah. We need to like, shitty. I'm a velociraptor oil. <laughs> like, well, like when you go to like a Sinclair gas station, like they have the dinosaur mascot. Torch it should it. be like, our oil is only made from dinosaurs. Yes. 100% dinosaur guaranteed. 100% dinosaur, no plankton bullshit. Plankton safe fuel. <laughs> Do you think horse fossils are going to make like really fast fuel? Like that'll be premium? Oh, like because the horse power? Horse power, yeah. That's why they call it that, right? <laughs> no, we got into this. Oh my god, don't, oh, don't bring up the horse power. Right, right, ignore me. It was did glue. You, did you lose ah. your glue? I lost my glue. I was going to pull it out as a little joke. I don't trust guy. you with that glue. Did you nick my glue? What? All right, what's going on tonight at RTX? What's, uh, what's, the, what's the big events tonight? On the spot in an hour. On, on the spot. spot. If only we had an oh. app for this. What? That's oh. a good point. You Whatever should check the I'm app. I'm looking at it right now. We have Cinemonster, an improvised movie disaster, Always Open Mixer. There you go. On Ready? the spot live. Oh, the Jeff Williams concert's tonight. Oh, yeah. A kind Dude, of funny comedy so fun. night. And The Rave featuring Grindcrack. Like, what a wonderful a app. Now. Thank you. That's crazy. Lovely app. Thanks, Dad. So, Mr. Dunkelman, who's the creator of the app, I actually, I don't know if you were in the panel, I don't think you were, uh, the Red versus Blue panel, uh, years ago, a, as early as after season one, people just started asking us, are you going to make more Red versus Blue? And they kept asking at the end of every season, are you going to make more Red versus Blue? And I got to the point after 10 years, I was like, if we're going to end this series, I promise we're going to tell you that we're going to do it. So we made a website called areyoumakingmoreredversusblue.com. And all it says when you go to it is just, yes, and that's it. And there's a mobile version, which is just text, and it says, yes, in text. And then there's a YouTube channel that uh, has just a video that says the word yes on it, and that's <laughs> it. And so uh, I need to develop an app to keep up with modern times, because uh, people need to know if we're making more red versus blue. I saw the best Reddit post about that. I was in the red versus blue uh, subreddit, and someone asked the question, uh, season 16 has ended, are they going to make more red versus blue? And of course, the first person in the comments posted, are you making more red versus blue.com and posted it. And the guy replied, oh yeah, I know that site, I've been to it, I just don't know if they keep updating it. <laughs> <laughs> we literally cannot win, we cannot win. You, you need to make at the bottom of that site, just last updated on, and then put a date. And it's just a, a timestamp for whatever day you're whatever looking date at Whatever date it is? No, That's you just need a website shows. that ask whether that site is up to date. <laughs> is are you making more red versus blue.com updated.com? Yes. That's already been taken, by the way. <laughs> All right, well, before we go, because we are almost out of time, um, we have 20 seconds left, so if anybody has any questions. No. <laughs> <laughs> we do want to say very quickly, we want to give a, a big shout out to the ambassadors who were up here introing the panel before we came up. They've been awesome. Um, if you're coming to RTX in the future, whether it's Austin, London, 
Sydney or the other one. Uh, <laughs> be sure to apply for the ambassador program. And we also want to give, when I said earlier today, that we've been very fortunate, knock on wood, that this has been a very uneventful event in terms of catastrophes or delays or anything like that. We owe that almost entirely to our Guardian staff who are amazing. Yeah. Thank you to the Guardians. And thank you for bringing me a drink, Guardians. Thanks. I'll say, any closing thoughts? Thanks, everybody, have, coming out to the panel. Have a good thank time. You. See you in London. <laughs>